This is the new Ice Barrel 300. It's compact and insulated, but does it actually keep water cold and can I even fit in it? I'm going to answer these questions and more right now. Welcome back to TRG. My name is Matt and today we're checking out the new Ice Barrel 300. Before we jump in, go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on all the content and giveaways that we have lined up. Also, if you're looking to buy the Ice Barrel, consider using our affiliate link down in the description. This helps support our channel at no additional cost to you so we can continue bringing you helpful content. You can also find our coupon code down below the like button so you can get a discount on your purchase. All right, today we're checking out the Ice Barrel 300. On the surface, this looks like a simple cold tub, but there's actually a lot to unpack here, so buckle up. The very first thing that I noticed was how sleek and simple this design looks. I love the minimalistic branding and that the logo is on here, but that it's not all up in your face. It feels really clean. I really like the textured matte black color. The material on this just feels and looks really nice and is super high quality, so I feel like it's going to look good almost anywhere you decide to put it. This material, however, is not scratch resistant and scuffs and scratches can show up pretty easily on this since it's black, so be careful to not drag or roll it around. It's made right here in the USA from recycled materials and the body and lid are both insulated top to bottom with polyurethane foam. The insulation adds quite a bit of weight to this. When it's empty, it weighs about 61 pounds and it holds up to 77 gallons of water. When it's full, it weighs around 700 pounds. So just keep in mind that you're going to need a dedicated space to keep this. There are two handles on the side, so it's pretty easy to pick up and move by yourself or with another person. It's 35.5 inches wide and about 30.5 inches tall. So it's definitely compact, but it's still large enough that you might have a little bit of trouble fitting it through a doorway. For the Ice Barrel 300, size definitely matters. This is more compact than most cold tubs and Ice Barrel only recommends people up to six foot two and 250 pounds use it. I'm six foot five and about 240 pounds because my wife and I just had our second kid and I'm in my dad bod era, so I've definitely been testing this to its limits. Stick around to see some POV of me using this so you can get a good idea whether or not you're going to fit inside. Moving to the inside of the barrel, unlike other cold tubs where you squat or lay down, this is designed so you can sit down comfortably inside. There's a small seat to sit on, but when you get inside, it almost feels like you're floating in the water and you kind of have to push yourself downward to get all the way to the bottom. The seat is a nice touch here that I know a lot of people, including me, have asked for. One other really nice thing about the inside of this is that there are armrests up top, so if you want to submerge your hands, you can rest your arms on the sides to keep yourself comfortable. One last detail about the inside of this that really goes to show how much time and energy went into designing and engineering this product the bottom is very slightly angled to push all the water towards the drain. So it's much easier to drain your water and get that last little bit out. It's really those small details that I noticed that make me realize that Ice Barrel is really listening to consumers and trying to bring the best possible product to market. Moving to the lid, it's nice and heavy duty. So you know if you have this outside, it's not going to fly off in the wind. It's easy to take off and put on and there's actually a small notch in the rim of the ice barrel with a congruent spot on the lid to make the lid sit in place. This stops the lid from moving or spinning and gives you a tight seal to help keep the debris out of the tub. The ice barrel also comes with a cover that is UV and water resistant so you can get a little bit of extra protection. And lastly, this is covered by a limited lifetime warranty. This holds 77 gallons of water and takes about 10 to 12 minutes to fill up, depending on how high you want your water level. You're going to want to change your water and clean this about every three to four weeks to make sure everything is staying clean. You can add chlorine or use some of the Ice Barrel's water stabilizer if you'd like. Fortunately, it's super easy to get in and out of, 
So keeping this clean and maintaining it is a lot simpler. There's a spigot on the outside to attach a hose that makes it easy to drain the water when you need to. Super simple to drain, which, make, which is much appreciated. One of the coolest features on the Ice Barrel 300 is that it's chiller ready. So instead of having to drill holes into the barrel or do too much DIY, there it connects to attach a chiller. There are three quarter inch ports on the side, here on the top and here on the bottom where the spigot is. One other small detail is that on the inside there is a pre-filter. So if you're going to attach a chiller and have the same water flowing through this constantly, there is already one level of filtration happening at the drain. If you already have a chiller that you want to attach, then you have to do a little bit of DIY, but Ice Barrel has teased that they're coming out with a much anticipated chiller here in the near future. I don't know too much about this right now, but I will put a link down in the description as soon as that becomes available. Okay, so after a ton of trial and error with buying ice, buying a chest freezer and making ice at home and everything like that, my wife and I actually bought the Active Aqua Chiller from Amazon and have a DIY setup with the Ice Barrel 400 at home. It's worked super well, but we will be switching that chiller over to the new, new Ice Barrel here soon. For testing purposes, I wanted to just use ice so I could actually give you guys some data and see how well the insulation works. The first test I did was in my temperature controlled garage. I keep it about 70 degrees year round. So I added 120 pounds of ice and filled the barrel up to about four fifths the weight full. The temperature got down to about 38 degrees initially and maintained there for about a day, which I was extremely happy with. Seven days after I added the water, the temperature had crept up to about 52 degrees and 11 days after I originally added the water, the temperature was about 62 degrees. So I've been really impressed with how the insulation is working. Yes, if you're just using ice, the water temperature is going to move up gradually, but if you want to maintain your water temperature, it's going to require much less ice because the insulation is doing its job. For example, I also tested adding about 40 pounds of ice when the ice barrel was about 54 degrees and I was able to get the water temp back down to about 48 degrees. This has saved us a lot of time making ice, so I've been really happy with it. The second test I did was outside. We live in the desert and it's the middle of October, so we have some pretty massive temperature swings. It's about 52 degrees in the morning and gets up to about 90 degrees in the afternoon. So I did the same thing, 120 pounds of ice, four fifths the way full. The water temperature coming out of my hose was about 68 degrees and I was able to get the water temperature down in the ice barrel to about 38 degrees again. 24 hours later I came back to check and the water was about 42 degrees. Another 12 hours later the water was up to about 45 degrees and I continued to check over the next couple of days. After about four days of originally adding the water the temp was just above 60 degrees. Now, this was not in the heat of summer, so take that for what it's worth, but it definitely didn't perform as well outside in the sun and heat, but I was still super happy with the result that the water stayed cold for as long as it did. This is going to save you a ton of time and money in the long run, or if you just wanna get a chiller, that will be your best bet because you won't have to worry about ice at all. Going that route has really lowered the barriers that kept me from taking ice baths and has made it easier to add this to my routine. We will be connecting our chiller to the Ice Barrel 300, so if you'd like to see more content about that, let me know down in the comments. Okay, what's up guys? So we are in my garage. I'm about to give you some POV, getting in the Ice Barrel really quick. I just wanna show you the chiller that we have set up. Um, I'm gonna shut it off when I actually get in, so you can hear me talk because it's a little bit noisy. But right here, as you can see, we actually just have our filter connected right to the spigot. And then from the filter is the pump that's pumping water out, which is really nice. And that pumps the water into the chiller. And then again, water back in up here. And you can see, take this lid off. It's uh, pumping water in nice and, uh, nice and steady. Um, really really nice um, so let me get this chiller off and then I'll jump in and give you some POV okay so the chillers off um, as I said before just so it's not too noisy so you guys can hear me while I'm talking so um, let's step in here let's see we've got it's about uh, 
52 degrees. Um, so it's gonna be nice and chilly. So as you can see, really easy to step in. Nice and cold. Uh, let's get our timer started. And let's sit down. I'm actually gonna sit down on the side that doesn't have the seat. Okay, I'm not gonna put my hands in quite yet, but as you can see, my legs are not crossed. Um, they're just bent and my toes are all the way up against the wall of that other side of the barrel, there where the seat is. Um, since I'm a bit taller, um, six foot five, 200 and about 40 pounds right now, um, I can get a little bit more room and I can get a little bit lower if I don't sit on the side with the seat. Um, but if I don't cross my legs like this, I can't get very low at all. Um, so let me cross my legs and you can kind of see, I can get a little bit more room in here when I let myself. So now I'm a little bit lower. I was about at mid chest before and now my uh, chest is completely submerged in the ice barrel. I'm gonna try and go for, uh, let's see if we can go for about eight minutes in here and I'll just talk to you guys while I'm hanging out in here, which is uh, hopefully helps some of you out and gives you a good idea of how you might fit in the ice barrel. Um, let me give you some uh, footage of what it looks like from uh, up above a little bit. And then you can kind of see my kind of how I'm fitting in here. So let me get my hands in and see if we can scoot down a little bit lower. Those armrests are really nice, make it really convenient to, um, you know, get your, relax your arms. One nice thing about the chiller is that it will continually pump water in. So it allows you to not get comfortable because the cold water is continually moving over your body um, in a cold plunge. The more you sit still, uh, the more your body will create a heat layer on your body. So it'll actually make it a little bit easier over time if you just sit and uh, let your body kind of have that heat barrier. But if you're moving, um, it doesn't actually allow your body to do that. Another way you can do that if you don't have a chiller is just like move your hands, wiggle your toes, just try to move your body so um, your body can't uh, create that heat barrier. Um, it's all up to you though and you know your level um, and your goals. Um, if you're brand new to this and getting in is really difficult then um, do what's best for you but some people that are a little bit more advanced and want to try and push themselves those are those are that's one thing that uh, you can do to um, continue to to push yourself in the ice barrel so i'm going to try and sit down a little bit lower here so my shoulders are about all the way if I actually don't use the armrests, I can get my shoulders all the way under the water. And right now that's, uh, my shoulders are in, it's all the way up to about my chin right here. Um, but as you can see, my knees are um, coming up quite a bit because I'm pushing my um, back down a little bit. I can't um, dunk in this while I'm sitting. Um, the only way that I've found to dunk, uh, having a lot longer legs, just being bigger um, is actually putting my legs out and then dunking backwards. Um, that's the only way I've found to be able to dunk so far. Um, if you guys have found other ways, I would love to hear about them in the comments. Please let me know. Um, always looking for tips and 
how it can be uh, different and more challenging for me. Um, okay, I've been here about almost six minutes. Um, quick comparison of using the Ice Barrel 400 versus the Ice Barrel 300. Um, this the Ice Barrel 300, you are sitting down completely. That's uh, or you can kneel, um, but really that's the only way to use it. The Ice Barrel 400 is a little bit different because you're more of in a squat position. Um, so it's almost like you're in a little bit more of an athletic position versus the sitting down like you are in the Ice Barrel 300. Um, compared to laying down in one of those tubs, I actually like the sitting or the squatting a lot better. Um, for me personally, I like um, the position I'm in when I'm squatting a little bit better. I feel a little bit more active Honestly, I don't know how much that matters. It's just kind of personal preference because um, it's really on you and uh, what your goals are and what you're trying to achieve by uh, using cold exposure. So um, I don't mind the sitting at all. Um, for a bigger guy, I actually fit really well in the Ice Barrel 300. It's not a bad fit for me at all. Um, obviously, it's a little bit tighter than the Ice Barrel 400, but I don't mind. Um, I can still achieve my goals and kind of do what I want to do by having a little bit more compact cold plunge. One challenge that we have at my house is um, my wife's a little bit smaller than me. She's 5'10", um, so we have to kind of figure out a good water level that works for both of us. Um, obviously with her, she'd like the water level a little bit higher, um, so she doesn't have to quite work as hard to fully submerge. Um, but for me, um, we would have the water spilling out over into the garage if we didn't keep it a little bit lower. So that's kind of a compromise that we have to make. So if you have multiple size people in your household, that's something that you're going to have to figure out. Um, it's not that big of a deal, just something that I wanted to, um, bring to your attention. Okay. We've been in about 10 minutes now. Oh, my lights are shutting off. So let's get out. I'll show you kind of what the step out looks like. See if I can get my lights to turn back on. Here we go. So there you have it, uh, Ice Barrel 300. Let me know what questions you have in the comments. I hope this was helpful. Um, but again, yeah, please let me know if you have any questions, concerns. Uh, Happy to help in any way I can. Thanks for watching our review of the Ice Barrel 300. This is a great option for a cold tub and beats out a lot of the other options on the market. The insulation actually works great and is really impressive, but the size is pretty limiting for bigger people like me. Ultimately, getting cold is the whole purpose here and I'm still able to achieve my goals and push myself even in a little bit smaller of a tub. Before you go, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also find our affiliate link for current pricing down below the like button and we'll catch you next time.